Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is LL3's latest podcast. My name is Craig. I'm in, in the swampy mangroves of South Florida, and today is January 6, 2014. Yeah, it's been a while. Just been uh, working. So, fortunately, I can't really do any other episodes before that. And I do apologize for the inconvenience. And today, I'm going to be narrating and discussing uh, article that was written by Ben Bullard, B U L L A R D, from PersonalLiberty.com, and it's entitled "Firearms Company Magpul Makes Good on Pledge to Leave Colorado Over Gun Control Laws." It looks like since they uh, passed certain uh, laws in in that state companies were like questioning and planning to move and looks like this one particular company had been taking action so let us begin it's entitled again firearms company Magpul makes good on privilege to leave Colorado over gun control laws Magpul maker of gun accessories like grips mounts sights and magazines was among the first firearm companies to take a principled stand against gun control laws passed last year in Colorado where the company had done business for the past 14 years. In March, Magpul announced that it would not continue to operate in the state that limits its residents' Second Amendment freedoms while playing host to firearm manufacturers that can make but not sell their goods in Colorado. It wasn't just idle talk. Magpul makes 30 round magazines, which are now illegal under Colorado's new ban on mags that holds more than 15 rounds. If we're able to stay in Colorado and manufacture a product, but law-abiding citizens of, that sta- of the state were unable to purchase the product, customers around the state and the nation will boycott us for remaining here. Magpul CCOO Doug Smith told Denver Post shortly, before the Democratic controlled state legislator and Governor John Hickenlooper approved the new gun laws. Staying here will hurt our business. Now, Magpul is making good on that pledge. The company announced late last week that it has secured new manufacturing and distributor facility, distribution facilities in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and will move its corporate headquarters to one of the three locations under consideration in northern Texas. In last week's announcement, Smith and Magpul C- C- Smith and Magpul CEO Richard Fitzpatrick, which reiterated the reason the company elected to move its operations. Magpul made a decision to relocate in March 2013 and has proceeded on an aggressive but deliberate path, said Smith. These dual moves will be carried out in a matter that ensures our operations and supply chain will not be interrupted and our loyal customers will not be affected. Moving operations to states that support our culture of individual liberties and personal responsibility is important, said Fitzpatrick. The relocation will also improve business operations and logistics as we utilize the strengths of Texas and Wyoming in our expansion. Well, for the representative of Magpul, action speaks louder than words. And um, it was really um, disturbing. It is considered illegal under their so-called law, which some of the legislators and the knucklehead governor signed. They haven't, they haven't recalled or read what prohibition did in the 20th of alcohol. You can make it, but you can't sell it. And what did it, what did it achieve? Nothing. Plus, the people who worked in Magpul, who like lives in the state of Colorado, have to do two things. Find another job, or move with the company. You know, technically, that will hurt Colorado's tax revenue. And uh, they need to be ashamed for themselves for choosing poorly and let's just um look at this so-called law in Colorado which is 
Statute 18-12-302. Large capacity magazines prohibited penalties and exemptions. Subsection 1A. Accepted as otherwise provided in this section. On and after July 1st, 2013, a person who sells, transfers, or possesses a large capacity magazine commits a Class 2 misdemeanor. This is B, subsection B. Any person who violates subsection 1 of this section after having been convicted of a prior violation of said subsection 1 commits a Class 1 misdemeanor. And let's go to subsection C. Any person who violates subsection 1 of this section commits a class 6 felony. If the, per if the person possessed a large capacity magazine during the commission of a felony or any crime of violence, as defined in section 18-1.3-406. Okay, that's mainly crime of violence. Well, that's okay. Because I do, if you're going to use weapons, regardless of what it is, for criminal intent, yeah, you deserve harsher penalties. But, funny about this section here, it's a little bit, uh, I think they're trying to compress it with victimless crime laws to victim, victim related crimes. So, um, let's just check this out here. Let's go to uh, subsection 2 of that, of that same uh, statute. A. A person may possess a large capacity magazine if he or she, one, owns a large capacity magazine on the effective date of this section, and two, maintain continuous possession of the large capacity magazine. Subsection B, if a person who is alleged to have violated subsection one of this section asserts that he or she is permitted to legally possess a large capacity magazine pursuant to a paragraph A, subsection A of this su section, the prosecution has the burden of proof to refute the assertion. Hmm, oh goody. And, um, yeah, that's just pretty strange here. They have a little guidance guidance uh, letter that on the magazine ban. Let me see this letter here. See if it's readable or not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely put that put the link up. It's under handgunlaws.us, so you can really read it for yourselves. But you know, nah, why not? I'll read this. This was written July 10th, 2013, by Executive Director James H. Davis from Department of Law. It's in reference to what we talked about. Additional technical guidance on the interpretation and application of House Bill. 13-1224 Large Capacity Magazine Ban De Dear Director De Executive Director Davis As discussed in my letter to you of May 16th this year House Bill 13-1224 which regulates the sale, transfer, and possession of large capacity magazines was passed during this year's legislative session and became effective July 1st, 2013. We continue to review the law and provide technical guidance on how the law should be interpreted and enforced. This letter sets forth the additional technical guidelines requested today by the governor. One, magazines with a capacity of 15 or fewer rounds are not large capacity. Magazines as defined in HB 13-1224, whether or not they have a removable base plates. The base plates themselves do not enable the ma do not enable the magazines to be expanded and they serve functions aside from expansion notably they allow the magazines to be cleaned and repaired to actually convert them to higher capacities one must purchase additional equipment or permanently alter their operation mechanically unless so altered they are not prohibited the phrase to the phrase continuous possession it HB 1224 shall be afforded its reasonable everyday interpretation which is the fact of having or holding property in one's power or the exercise of dominion over property that is uninterrupted in time, sequence, substance, or extent. Continuous possession does not require a large capacity magazine owner to maintain literally continuous physical possession of the magazine. 
continuous possession is only lost by a voluntary relinquishment of domin domin dominion uh, and control. Sincerely, John W. Southers, Colorado Attorney General. C good, oh goody. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I have to laugh about that. But uh, yeah, definitely, I'll put that link up on handgunlaws.com. Uh, this I do find this a little bit annoying, and um, I know in the law too, you can't. Private sales are considered illegal. They have to be registered, which is totally unconstitutional. Under, of course, we can look at the U.S. Constitution, Article um, Second Amendment. Two, four, five, nine. Okay, of the U.S. Constitution. But you know what? We'll check out the Colorado's Constitution and explain explain how that law supersedes their state constitution. And we will go to Article Two of the Constitution, and it's entitled the Bill of Rights. And the preamble states. In order to assert our rights, acknowledge our duties, and proclaim the principles upon which our government is founded, we declare. We'll hit section 1, entitled Vestment of Political Power. All political power is vested and derived from the people. All government of right originates from the people, is founded upon their will only, and is instituted solely for the good of the whole. Well, I <laughs> don't... The governor and those lackeys did not do that. And right here, on section 2, people may alter or abolish form of government proviso. The people of the state have the sole exclusive right of governing themselves as a free, sovereign, and independent state and to alter and abolish their construction and form of government rather they may deem it necessary to their safety and happiness, provided such change may not repugnant to the Constitution of the United States. Well, they uh, goofed that one. And we'll hit section three, inalienable rights, and it states, all persons have certain natural, essential, and inalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying and defending their lives and liberties, of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and of seeking and obtaining their safety and happiness. Okay, if you're going to disagree with that, you know what to do. Okay, we will hit, go a little further. Uh, hit, let's read number six, section six. Equality of justice. Courts of justice shall open to every person and speedy remedy afforded for every injury to person, property, or character. And right and justice should be administered without sale, denial, or delay. Hmm, okay. Let's get section seven. Security of persons and property searches, seizures, warrants. The people shall be secure in their persons, papers, homes, and effects for unreasonable search and seizures, and no warrant to search any place or seize any person or things shall issue without describing the place to be searched or the person or thing to be seized, as near as may be, nor without probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation reduced to writing. Uh huh. Uh, that's that's really strange. Okay, we're just gonna go go a little bit more further down here. Ex yeah, hit, let's read, read number eleven, section eleven. Ex post facto laws. No ex post facto law nor law impairing the obligation of contracts or a retrospective in its operations or making any irrevocable grant of special privileges, franchises, or immunities shall be passed by the General Assembly. Ah, interesting there about post ex facto laws, huh? All right, we'll just hit number 13, section 13, called the right to bear arms. And it says, the right of no person to keep and bear arms in defense of his home, person, or property, or in aid of the civil power, when thereto legally summoned, shall be called in question. But nothing herein contained shall be construed to justify the practice of carrying concealed weapons. Alright, but like I said, it's uh, interesting there. A lot of stuff here.